podcast is not one you're going to normally even think about. And that's why I want to do it. And it has to do with those external factors like pets and insects, things that can really affect your art or your artifacts if you're not careful. So you have to think about these when you're uh, collecting. And I just want to go through a few of these things. Let's just start with pets, our dog and cat. Those are our usual things and sometimes birds as well. But when you think about cats and especially pottery, you have to be very careful because cats do like to climb inside them or get behind them. And I've seen at least one great $45,000 wonderful um, Maria Polychrome that got smashed in that very way. So there's a few things you can try to do. Um, best thing to do is to get them locked up. And I don't mean the cats, because we like them out. But to lock up the pots in a place where they can't get them. I think that's really critical, because it's not the cat's fault. It's really ours for having pieces where they can get to them. The other thing you can do is if they're pottery, you can take some sand and fill up about two thirds or one third of the pot. Not, you don't want to get it up too high because you don't want too much pressure on it. But this is good for not only a cat that might whack it, but also a dog that might hit it with their tail. And I have to say, I, you know, I watch where my dog goes and I avoid any of those routes that she likes to take, especially when she's hungry, because she's just going to be wagging her tail and going through things. And they can hit things. They can hit mounts. And you have to think about those kinds of things. Um, also, with earthquakes, it's really fantastic if you can put the sand in it. That's one of the best ways you can do it. Other things are insects. And there's all sorts of insects. There's beetles that will eat into uh, wooden objects. And and you need to look at your objects. You have wooden objects. Uh, you'll get little holes in them. And sometimes you can actually buy objects that have beetles in, uh, that are in it and they need to be fumigated or frozen or both. One of the ways you can look for it is if you see little fine ground of dirt, what looks like dirt, it's really wood, around the piece, then you've got a problem. So you want to check that periodically. Same with termites. Really the main problem are the subterranean termites. These come up from the foundation and go through anything that's wood, paper, uh, and go straight up. And I have been in homes where I have pulled things off the wall both paintings and furniture, where they just didn't check and it went right up the uh, from the base of the house into the furniture and basically destroyed not only a painting but furniture. And it could, so it's anything they, they can get on that. That's a, an important aspect. Then you have moths. Moths, the ones that are really important for textiles, are very small. I'll try to show you a little example of one of these. But they, what, where they like to live is on the other side. If it's a rug or a blanket against a wall. So you have to be careful and it's important to flip your rugs periodically, I would think at least every five to six months, just to look and see what's on the back end because that's where they're going to want to be. This is one of the reasons I don't particularly like putting textiles in a frame. I think that one, you have problems with UV, you get fading and you can't flip it and you can't see what's going on. And if a beetle gets in there, silverfish get in there, or if moths get in there, you have a problem. They do have moth baits now that you can buy, and they basically do a pheromone type of uh, offscent, and the moths will go to it, and they get caught in a sticky trap. These are really a wonderful way to worry and take care of moths. So when you think about your artwork, think about the environment it is in. So you have things you need to be concerned with, not only from your pets, but insects and even natural things like earthquakes. And when I lived in L.A., I know that my pots were never over my head, nor were any other type of big sculpture that might fall and whack me if inside of an earthquake. So you have to think about these things because you not only want to protect the pieces, but you want to protect yourself. Listen to the Art Dealer Diaries. That's my new podcast. And you know, I interview all sorts of interesting people that come through my life, whether it's an art dealer or a collector or an artist, somebody that I find interesting, and I think you will too. So listen to the Art Dealer Diaries. You can find it on YouTube and on any podcast uh, forum. Brought to you by Medicine Man Gallery, located for over 26 years in Tucson, Arizona, specializing in antique Native American art, early Western art, including the famed Maynard Dixon, as well as modern art. You can find everything online at medicinemangallery.com. There's over 6,000 objects to select from. Also, the Charles Bloom Murder Mystery Series, written by yours truly, me, Mark Sublett. There's six books in this series, and they follow the protagonist Charles Bloom through all the intrigue of the art world set in Santa Fe and the Navajo Nation. These can be found on Audible, eBooks, Amazon, and of course, the gallery.
at medicinemangallery.com.